Are you ready? Hello and welcome back. Another uh, joint episode here with Denton and, and myself, Lily. How are you doing this fine day? I am I am doing doing very well. And it, it is quite a it is quite a fine day too. Unlike a lot of previous St. Patrick's Day, uh, it's quite uh, it's quite uh, warm. It's uh, what fifty two uh, Fahrenheit at the moment. Uh, it's been sunny. Uh, it's been a very good day. And That's so, pretty nice. Uh, yes, yes. We just got a metric ton of snow here in Colorado. Oh, how nice! Twenty inches in some places. Ooh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not good. Well, at least you, you can have plenty of snowball fights, nothing else. But uh, I, I don't think I'd care for that too much. So this episode, we're going to talk about uh, St. Patty's Day and um, All Snakes Day. <laughs> no, I like that, All all, uh, all Snakes Day. Yes, I, I, I like that. And um, you, I, I mean, you are drinking something there, but I presume it is not something like Guinness, you know, for the greater honor and glory of the saints. It's right? green right. coffee. Oh it's, oh, it's green coffee. I like that. Green coffee. Very, uh, very good. That's very, very good. I have my green shirt on. I don't know if you can tell. Uh, green shirt. It doesn't show too well. Well, I have, no. I, have, I have a green hat here. I'm going to put this on. Oh, there, there you green, go. There's a green. Now, it's not an Irish hat. It's actually from Bavaria, but what the heck? it's close. It's green. Anyway. Close enough. Close enough. Close enough. Yes, so I have my I have my I have my green uh, hat on. So mine is probably from China. So, mm. oh, well, once it's green, yeah, yeah. In St. St. Patrick's Day, St. Patrick's Day has become a sort of international uh, thing. I mean, it you really know, has. Like on St. George's Day, the whole world doesn't say we're English. On Steuben Day, they don't say well, we're all German. Or, but uh, St. Patrick's Day, the entire world goes Irish. You know, I mean, and we have all these strange things that we see where rivers are dyed green, fireboats spray green water, the line down the road is painted green. It would never happen here in Ireland, where <laughs> Patrick's Day comes from. It happens in America, you know. I oh, mean, it's crazy say, here. Crazy. Oh, yes, I, I, I saw the river in Boston dyed green and... Uh, it's quite amazing. If mm. you said to the Dublin City Council, let's, let's, let's uh, you know, do all the lines on the road green and dye the Liffey. I mean, yeah, they would not they would not think very much of that idea at all. You know? No. And I mean, it's especially big in America. Uh, we, we have so many now in the parade today. We have, you know, the high school marching bands and we have we have uh, various fire departments and police and all this uh, from America. And it, it's quite comical, too, you know, all. All the Americans, they'll be there with their Aaron sweaters or, or the Kiss Me, I'm Irish t-shirts, you know, and they're saying, I'm Irish, you know, saying, no, you're not. Your ancestors came over on the Mayflower or something. But, you know, <laughs> you, you really, you know, you're not really Irish, but what the hell, you know, on St. Patrick's Day, you're Irish and that's it. You know. Hey, I'm Irish. I'm Irish. Okay. Yes. Right. Okay. That's fine. You hold that thought. You hold that <laughs> So what wonderful things uh, uh, do, do you want to talk about? on? Uh, okay, Patty so I got some interesting facts about mm -hmm. St. Patrick. We're going to go over them, and you're going to give us our, your thoughts on that since you're there. Um, I am. And I'm sure that you have a wider breadth of knowledge on the subject matter. So, okay. Well, I, you know, I mean, I, I, I do like to tell people that I am the repository of the sum total of all human knowledge. Then some rotten swine goes and asks me a question I can't answer, and it blows a bubble. But I'll do the best I can. You know. Okay, so here we go. This is the first one. He was not Irish. Yes, Patrick, in spite of having such an Irish name. I mean, how could you be more Irish than Patrick, you know? No, he, he was Romano-British. Um, he was captured by Irish uh, pirates, like Irish raiders, because while, like, you know, Vikings were raiding on one side of Britain, while the Irish were raiding on the other side of Britain, uh, they brought him to Ireland, um, and he got, he was converted to Christianity, like here, because he, uh, he did not bring Christianity to Ireland, it was already here. Uh, yeah. He returned, he returned to Britain, but a voice from above, a heavenly voice told him to go back and convert the Irish, you know, spread the faith, which he did. But yes, he was he was not Irish, though I think a lot of people assume that um, 
St. Paddy was probably Irish, but he wasn't. So that's number one. So what have you next? Okay, so the next one is, he spent his early years in Ireland as a slave. Yes, and indeed. That was, you were just talking about that. He was captured by slave traders. That's, that's right. He, he spent uh, years here as a slave um, because the, uh, I mean, the raids for slaves were going on at that time all over the place. And as I say, while the Norse had begun to, um, you know, appear uh, quite here and there, the the main raiding at that time would have been the Scots coming down over Hadrian's Wall into Northumbria, and it would have been Irish pirates and that coming across raiding Wales and the um, west coast of of Britain. So yes, he spent quite a long time here uh, as a slave. Uh, so I'm reading right here, it says that he actually wrote about that time. And it says he believed it happened because of his lack of faith in God. He remained mm. a slave in Ireland for six years, during which he prayed many times a day. So it was yes. apparently that was a, his punishment. Yes, indeed. Yeah, because he did leave. He did leave a couple of accounts of, of his life. And uh, yes, he was praying away. He didn't think maybe he'd been as quite as uh, faithful as he as he should have been and as i say like he was converted to christianity while he was here um before that i mean he would have been a pagan and uh, it's um it's quite an interesting story so what you're next? gonna you're gonna love this next one. Oh goody yes what he once refused to suck a man's breast did you know about that no well i knew about that one dear yes <laughs> Oh, I tell you, those sailors, you know, you wouldn't know what they'd be up to. But um, yes, when, when he was on the ship, they asked him to suck their nipples as a sign of friendship, you see. And I mean, yes, that is, that is a sign of friendship. I mean, you know, if, if you know. That's very to, close friendship. Very close friendship. I mean, I, I think if you wanted to suck my nipples, it would be, it would be really powerful. It would be, really, you know, be pretty close. But um, he refused, not because... He seemed to have anything against it, but he felt his God would not like it, you know. No, uh, his God would not like that at no, all. His God, would, his God would not have, have liked that at all. So uh, he he um, said no, and they said, well, just show your show your friendship and all that in, in another way, uh, which is what he did. But he didn't condemn it. And um, this, this is something, actually, something that came up in a, a gay pride meeting the other day talking about uh, St. Patrick, that he never actually condemned it. He didn't say it was wrong, just he didn't think his God would. would oh, so okay. Interesting. Well, that's a very interesting. I had never heard that. So that's that's new to but me. It, it's quite, um, I mean, you know, it, yeah, it's, it's something a lot of people don't know. Uh, and it, it, it is, at first sight, it is rather odd. You know, they want to. It to, is. To nipples, you know. That I mean, is an odd way to show friendship. It certainly is. It's not about, uh, you know, join the Navy, see the world and suck nipples. Kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, a bit weird. A bit weird. You're, yeah, I'm, I'm friends with you. You're friends with me. So the obvious next step is that we should suck each other's nipples. I mean, I, well, look, isn't it so obvious? I mean, Absolutely. You know, it's so glaringly obvious that we should have a nipple suck. I wish people would greet me that way. Well, if we ever meet you, I'll greet you that way if you'd like. I mean, <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, but, 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 no, we're just good friends. So we're just good friends. <laughs> All right. So here we go. Patrick heard voices and had visions. Now, I did know about this. Yes. Yes, he, he had. He had well, I mean, I think. All the all the saints and that of those days, they all had visions and uh, you know heard voices. It was it was pretty much standard operational procedure for being a saint in those days. Um, and I mean, I, I, people of course debate. Uh, some of them were they actual? Were they hallucinatory? Had they been you know puffing a little bit of the old wacky backy or something? Um, but uh, yes, he 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 did. But as I say, nearly all. Nearly all the accounts you will read of the uh, saints from that period, they were they were having visions and that, and that this is pretty much uh, common. Of course, you've got to if you're worth your well, salt. Oh yeah, I mean if you were talk talking to another saint, they said, "How many visions have you had?" And said, "Well, no, actually, actually, I haven't had any visions." And what you haven't had any visions? Call yourself a saint. No a sainthood vision. for you. 
No, it's all no sainthood for her. Sainthood for you. You're you're out. Go and get a good vision and come back with that. You know. <laughs> yes. All right. Mm. So here's the next one. There were never any snakes in Ireland for him to banish, and I know Absol that because it's too cold. Absolutely, snakes true. can't handle it. No, they can't indeed. Uh, I mean, we have plenty of two-legged snakes, or plenty of those, but none of the slithery kind. Yes, the um, the idea of St. Patrick banishing snakes, of course, is ridiculous because he wouldn't have been able to find any. There are no native reptiles in Ireland, except we have one little little common lizard. That's the only that's the only uh, native species. There never were snakes, and one theory is that. You know, they loved allegory and stories in those days. They would wrap something up in, in allegory. And right. One popular thing which seems to make sense is that the snakes referred to were the druids. They were a symbol of the pagan uh, faith. And, of course, they are personified then as serpents, snakes, because, of course, snakes were associated with the devil because it was a snake that caused all that fruit thing back in the garden of eden all the ruckus all the, all the trouble there uh, i must say uh, as, as dave allen the irish comedian said you know he said if a snake came down in front of me i'd take a step back but he said if it started talking to me it'd shit myself but anyway i mean if this was a this was a serpent was beware of snakes and women beware of snakes and women and uh, so it's quite possible that that is the actual case because the people at the time being familiar with the way these allegorical stories and that were told Obviously, the native Irish knew perfectly well there weren't any snakes slithering around in the place. So they would have seen the point of the story, that he's driving out the snakes in so far as he's driving evil out of, of Ireland. The snakes are a personification of evil, and this would have been the druids uh, that he would have actually been uh, driving out. Right. Which seems, be, which seems Now, whether he actually did drive out any druids, we know he did burn. Uh, he did destroy some druid uh, uh, things, effigies, and that. Whether he actually drove anyone out, I don't think there's any evidence for that. Yeah, um, there's no. That's another thing that I think is important to touch on here is that there's no evidence that he did anyone any actual harm. There's a lot of people no. think uh, equate that with. Um, you know, some kind of mass kill off or that he killed the pagan. He didn't kill the, any pagans. There was no, no violence associated with him. No, I, 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 I haven't seen any accounts um, of anything like that. And it really seems more likely that um, the pagan faith simply died out as it competed with Christianity. Certainly there was nothing like in Britain where the last stronghold of the Druids was on the island of Anglesey. And Suetonius Paulinus, the governor of Britannia, took a couple of legions across the Menai Straits, and he slaughtered the Druids. He wiped them out. Right. Uh, and that was, the of, that was the end of... Yeah, there was Druids. definitely loads of Christian violence against pagans, but yes. but St. Patrick was not associated with that no, he, in he particular. Didn't do anything, no, he didn't do anything like the Romans did, where they just exterminated the Druids. I, I mean... It did work. Your trouble with druids, exterminate druids, peace with druids. So it, yeah, it worked. But uh, Patrick doesn't appear to have done anything uh, quite like like that uh, at all. So we should also spend a second talking about All Snakes Day. Um, well, yes. <laughs> all so snakes. a lot of pagans have adopted this moniker for today, as opposed to celebrating a Catholic holiday. Mm -hmm. So instead, they um, they celebrate All Snakes Day and the fact that we're still here. So mm -hmm. we were not yes. driven. No, no, still, still out, here. And we still exist. Mm -hmm. it, 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 uh, an interesting point, too, is that in those days, of course, there was no Catholic church. There was the church. Right. Was, uh, it didn't really become the Catholic Church until Luther, the Reformation, and all this. And you had the Protestants and the Catholics. And the split. But, and Yeah, before that, it really was just the church. The knock on the door. <laughs> Ein Minuten bitter. Yeah. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> but um, it's, it, it's a, quite a, a fascinating uh, thing in history. And one of the ways, of course, that the church did get rid of paganism was basically 
to take paganism and Christianize it. A lot of people don't seem to realize this. Yeah. Uh, and it was done in Europe too, but it was greatly done in Ireland. And um, there's actually a letter. It was written um, by the Pope in six something or other to the new Bishop of London in uh, England. And the Bishop had complained that he was having a problem converting the pagans. It wasn't going too well. And the Pope said, use their own sacred days, use their own sacred things, Christianize them. And that will, uh, this was actually an instruction from Rome. And here in Ireland, what they did, they would build their churches on pagan sacred sites beside sacred groves. They might build them from wood from sacred groves. They would baptize people using the water from the pagan holy wells. Now, we, we, there's over 3,000 holy wells all over Ireland. Most oh, I did not know that. Them, yeah, most of them date from pagan times. But yes, in, in ancient Ireland, you couldn't throw a stone in any direction without hitting a well. So you're baptizing people with water that they are used to using in ceremonies. Your, your church is on one of their sacred sites. Um, they took the triple Celtic goddess, Bridget, was one of the goddesses of the two of the dead and none. And they popped a halo on her head, on her head, made her one person called a Saint Bridget. You know, now there was a, there was a woman actually called Bridget, but the whole concept of uh, Saint Bridget came from the pagan goddess. So again, um, you have this connection, and of course Saint Bridget is one of the three patron saints of, of Ireland, along with Saint Patrick and Saint Columba. And um, there's there's another one that I just read about actually today. Um, mm -hmm. Tell me if you know about this, the cross with the circle in it, that Irish cross symbol that we all see all the time. Oh, yeah, that they, circle they, was, there was a lot of sun worship. That circle was put there to represent the sun. Yes. And that's something yes. that specifically St. Patrick did to do exactly what you're saying, to put their symbolism into exactly. Christian it's, stuff. The old sun symbol was a circle with a full uh, cross in it. So like what he did was to take the circle, put the Celtic cross if you like, in it. So you had combined the Celtic and the Christian. And again, it was to help people to convert. It was much right. easier to convert people if they were using their water, their sacred groves, their, all, all this. Um, and of course, it, uh, it, well, it was very clever. It was very subtle. And... I mean, we, we see the same with uh, Christmas because nearly all the traditions of Christmas, apart from yeah. Jesus being born, and he said he wasn't born on the 25th of December, of course. Right. But apart from that, I mean, the Yule log, the, the ham giving uh, presents, green, green plants, all this came from pagan uh, times, principally like Old Norse and, and Germanic. But right. again, it was adapted to um, help with um you know keeping uh, pagans happy and getting them to become christians quite clever it was it was psychology long before sigmund freud came along you know the church yes. knew that stuff centuries before it was quite clever like well like the 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 cathedral in notre dame de paris i think was actually built originally on the site of uh, the original church there was built on the site of a temple to jupiter i think it was a roman temple so yeah i had heard i have heard that like that yes very clever, very, very, uh, very clever, very subtle. And it, it, it meant they didn't have to go around like killing anybody or forcing uh, uh, people. I mean, not that they, not that they wouldn't and not that they didn't in other places, but they, they were able to convert them without, uh, without force, you know, right. to, which was a good way to, a good way to do it. Yeah. A lot less to clean up afterwards. All well, right. So this, this next one is kind of vague. So I'm going to read a little bit of it. it says he had a dirty secret. Okay. So then what it says here is Patrick believed his missionary work in Ireland as penance for something he did in his younger years. He was often punished for spreading the word of God up and down the country, but it never stopped him in his writings. He revealed that someone had disclosed his early sin to the other bishops they brought up against me after 30 years, something I had already confessed, some things I had done one day, rather in one hour when I was young, Patrick wrote. 
So he never elaborated on what that deed had been. But apparently there was something that he did when he was younger that was real bad that yes. later come, came back to haunt him, just like with politicians. Don't yes. do anything bad if you're a politician. Somebody's going to dig up some dirt on you. Yes, yeah, somebody will find it. Yes, yes. Now, um, as I said, I'm not, uh, I'm not sure like what he actually did. Well, yeah, and it doesn't say, but, you know, I guess said. worth mentioning. Yes, yes, he had done, he had done something, but presumably he'd done all the penance and he prayed and he'd done all that and they accepted. Oh, I keep getting messages there. I'm so popular, you see. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually the, quite endearing to me because at least, you know, he wasn't perfect. There was something in his past yes. that he was not proud of. Yes, yes. No, no, he, he uh, certainly, you, you couldn't say he was 100% pure, shining, uh, brilliant, you know. But um, of course, that, that applied to quite a few uh, people. Well, I mean, St. Francis, who became famous for, you know, loving animals and all this kind of thing. I mean, he had been, he had been a soldier. He was one of the condottieri. He would have had quite a, a violent beginning. And then he, then he went all nice, you know, and uh, started going around <laughs> The birds sitting on his hand, you know. Right. So that, that would that would not have been a an uncommon thing. It'd be interesting to know what Patrick had actually done. Um, I know. I wish that I knew. Yeah, it probably wasn't all that bad. It's probably something that if we knew, we'd say, "Was that all?" You know. He probably had sex with a lady. I would imagine it was something like that. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe maybe had sex with a guy, or maybe had both. Who uh, knows? You know, it's quite it's quite possible. But uh, unfortunately, we will never. <laughs> It's very sad, really. All right. The next one is simple enough. He never wore a shamrock. No, no. The shamrock wasn't um, worn uh, like uh, as a symbol. Now, the, the story is, of course, the story is that he used the shamrock to explain to the uh, Ard Reen Heron, which is a high king of Ireland, uh, to explain to him a, a trinity, how something could have the three trinity. parts and yet the one. And that would have made perfect sense. I mean, it would be it would make sense. The shamrock was used in decoration. Of course, it was well known to everyone. It was a common plant. So it is entirely possible that he did use it. I mean, it would have been a sensible thing to do. So they're saying, well, how can something be in three parts but be one? You say, well, hang on a minute here. Pluck that. See this? That's one plant that's got three parts. Yeah, it would have made sense. But we can't say he did. Um, that's, the, that's the story uh, that he did. Um, it, it could be uh, that it is um, uh, made up. It may not be true, as is, I mean, as is his lighting of the Beltane fire to get himself onto the hill of Tara. Um, I mean, you know about that, uh, do you? No. Uh, the, That's what uh, you're here well, for. The, there were fires lit across Ireland uh, at the Feast of Beltane, which was a, a fire festival. And the high king would light the first fire, you know, and then other fires would be would be lit uh, and all this. And the story is that um, uh, good old Paddy hoofed up onto the Hill of Slain, which is about nine miles from the Hill of Tara. And he lit a fire uh, at Beltane before the high king had lit one. And the high king looks across, sees the fire, and says, who the hell is over there lighting fires before? Get over there and get that guy. Bring him here. You know. And the uh, druids went over. They couldn't put the fire out because it was a bit of a magic fire, you know, touch of Wagner there. But um, they brought him uh, to the high king, et cetera, et cetera. Now, the, the problem with the story is that the Beltane fire wasn't lit on the hill of Tara. It was actually lit on a hill over 40 miles away near the modern town of Mullingar. Uh, and, you know, given the fact that Ireland was heavily forested in those days, you would have had a high trees, you know. Uh, it's really almost impossible that the High King would have been able to see a fire on the Hill of Slain from where he was over 40 miles away. So that seems a bit unlikely, you know. Um, uh, it, it's quite possible that is just a that is just another story just one of um, those so, uh, um, grand elaborations that we yes, get up to uh, to make things a good grand, a grand um, uh, elaboration because um, as i say it would have been the fire the fire would have had to be enormous for one thing to be seen 40 miles away 
and with all the trees in the way, the, the hill strain really isn't high enough that it would have compensated for someone 40 miles away standing beside tall trees. They, they wouldn't have been able to see it. So I, I think that one is probably just um, legendary, you know. But, uh, but there, there, there's another very interesting aspect, I think. Unless, do you have any? Do you have any more on your list? Yes, three oh, more. Good. We're Go down. On. We're we, we're down. We've got three more. Uh, oh, this one was easy. Uh, yeah. He didn't wear green. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Green, green was not. Uh, green would not have been a color he would have. Uh, he would have worn now, in the church at certain times of the year. The color of vestments and that changed. But I think in the early church, it's unlikely they were doing that. I mean, you know, nowadays colors vary according to whether it's Easter or it's whatever, whatever it is. The, the color of the vestments often changes. But in the early days of the church, I doubt very much if, if that would have been the case. He probably would have worn whatever robe he happened to be wearing, you know. So, no, he wouldn't have been going around in, in green. Not intentionally. Right. I mean, he might, have, he might have had something that was dyed green, but it, uh, it certainly wouldn't have been he was wearing green because well i mean that's that's paddy's color green you know that's no so continue all right so then patrick was in his 40s when he brought christianity to ireland but to be honest i'm not actually sure what age he was but he's no he certainly wasn't terribly young because he was an you know i mean he was a, an adult he was captured he was brought here he returned to britain came back again so no, he would not have. He would not have been uh, all that young. Exactly what age he was, to be honest, I'm not really sure. But he, he certainly wasn't a spring chicken, put it that way. And then the last one is Patrick means nobleman. I guess the name means nobleman. No, did you know they, they have me on that one actually? Because to be honest, I'm not really sure what uh, uh, Patrick or Podrick, as it would be in Irish, um, actually means. So there. Well, I'm glad I got oh, you on one. Yeah. Well, you see, what did I tell you about being the sum total of the, you know, the, the repository of the sum total of all human knowledge? You went and asked me a question I can't answer you. Right, I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> no, good. Yeah, so no, do you I, have I, anything, anything to add? Anything that we well, haven't talked about that you well, want to add about St. Patrick? There is something about this international Irishness. You know, the way um, St. Patrick's Day has become so big around the world. I mean, we see the, the um, river in, in Chicago being dyed green. We see, you know, a green line down Fifth Avenue in New York and all this. And all over the world, there is this great celebration of, of St. Patrick's Day. The comical thing is the one place where that didn't really happen is here mm -hmm. in Ireland. Um, we do not go anywhere. I mean, we have we have a parade, of course. We have all that, and uh, people go and they they swig down lots of Guinness. Mind you, they swig down lots of Guinness on every, every other day, day. Yeah. Well, so that doesn't this, really. You know. My it, theory it, is, it's just a chance for people to um, get as wasted as they possibly can with a there, reason. There, well, there is. You can say, well, no, I, 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 I don't. I, I, I don't drink really like, but you know, for the, for the greater honor and glory of the saint, like, you know, I had, I had a few, I only had a few, like, for the, for the honor of St. Patrick, like, yeah, it's a good excuse. Um, but we, 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 I mean, we don't paint lines green down the street, we don't dye the river Liffey green. We are very laid back compared with, say, America in, in celebrations. Um, the very interesting thing about Patrick's Day parades is, I just made a note here. There was a Patrick's Day parade in, in, in America in 1737. Uh, Irish soldiers in the British Army had a parade. The first Patrick's Day parade in New York occurred in 1762. The first Patrick's Day parade in Ireland, believe it or not, it was in the city of Waterford, and that was in 1903. And Dublin didn't catch up until 1931, when Dublin had the first uh, Patrick's Day parade, but there were Patrick's Day parades popping up in other countries uh, long before, and I, I think that's rather an interesting fact that the the place where the least real celebration of Patrick's Day is here in Dublin. You know, I mean, yes, we do have the big parade, but um, it's it's nothing compared with parades in America and in in other countries. Well, and I think that the part of the reason for that is that. 
you know, some of these other countries, especially America, got such a huge influx of immigrants Mm. from all different kinds of places that missed their homeland. And this was like the one time that they could celebrate their homeland. Mm -hmm. And so I think it started out as that and just became everybody, let's get drunk and wear green. Yes. You know, and the same for like Cinco de Mayo, because it's basically, it's just a drinking holiday. It's, you know, Cinco de (laughs) Mayo is you drink, you listen to mariachi music and you eat tacos. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and um, on St. Patrick's day, you drink, and you and you eat cabbage and corned oh, beef. Oh yeah, so corned beef and cabbage. Yeah, this is some do you guys have? Do you guys do cabbage and corned beef over there? Is it like? Because I I just feel like it's such a, it's almost like in America you eat a hamburger, you know. That's just <laughs> it's not true. <laughs> no, it, it is it is it is an Irish uh, national uh, dish, corned beef and cabbage. Um, a lot of the Irish dishes came from the peasantry years ago because they were cheap, they were easy to make, corned beef, cabbage, anything with potatoes, stews and that with potatoes uh, in them. Um, uh, these were very much the foodstuff of the peasants. You might not have found the landed gentry eating uh, some of those things. But they were, yes, though, I mean, that is a, it is a genuine thing. It's not like, say, chop suey and everybody says, oh, that's Chinese. Actually, it was invented in America. Um, so those are those are um, Irish um, dishes, uh, certainly. Um, the as I say, the the uh, drinking Guinness. Well, of course, the, the Irish do not need any excuse to do that any day. I mean, the cat's birthday. What the hell? We'll, we'll have we'll have a right. couple of pints. <laughs> but uh, the um, yeah, the food. I mean, that is uh, that is certainly uh, genuine. And there's lots of other uh, traditional things here, like uh, pig's feet. That would mm-hmm. be something you probably you probably wouldn't encounter in America. Um, quite a lot of stuff like that. There are areas. And, uh, there are areas uh, for pig's feet in America. Cottage, yeah. And uh, soda bread. That's another big Irish yeah. uh, thing. And the 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 traditional loaf of so, uh, soda bread has a cross cut in the top of it. Mm-hmm. And it, now that makes it handy to break it to uh, to eat it. But the idea originally was to see that the soda bread was a weapon against the devil. Now, personally, we if, need, if we need plenty of those, we need plenty of those. You know, I, I, I think if you know, if Lucifer suddenly popped up there in a in a big cloud of sulfur and brimstone, and I held up a soda bread, said, "Nah, you're not getting me. Look, I got a soda bread." Ha ha. Yes. I don't think it would do very much. You know, I, a thought just crossed my mind that I have to mention. Um, Christmas is not very heavily associated with drinking, which is really weird because Yule is heavily associated with drinking. Yes. So yes. how did that happen where where you got all of these other things that were associated with Yule, except for the not drinking good. part, but then yes. you've got Cinco de Mayo and St. Patrick's Day, and it's like mm. not super associated with drinking, but it's become all about drinking. That is true. It's a very good point because, as I said, and everything about Christmas basically is is pagan. Yeah. But the drinking aspect of the midwinter festival in Scandinavia and, and uh, northern Germany did not translate over into Christmas, which is quite interesting. But there is, there is a very interesting story. You know, King Håkon the Good uh-huh. uh, in Norway tried to get Christians and pagans together. Like he wanted to convert the country, but he, he, was a, he was a decent guy. He wasn't, unlike Olaf Tryggvason who came along later, it wasn't a matter of, if you don't accept the way of truth and love and justice, you die. You know, no, Hawkon, Hawkon didn't want that Wait, He wanted to bring everybody was it, together. Happy. Was it Olaf Tryggvason that got sainted? Oh, oh yes, sainted, oh, yes. Or was that, all, was that Olaf... Was, Oh God, one, I can't remember now. Would you one believe? of the Olafs got sainted. But yes, right. I think I think I, well, I should know that off the tip of my tongue. But they. Oh, I know. Not. Me too. There they was a drink. There was a drink earlier. But um, Hawkon decreed that you know that um, Christmas and the um, pagan winter festival should be celebrated together, 
and but everybody had to drink at least uh, like four about four gallons of ale or mead over the three days of the, the official festival it's about um, drinking um which was you know I, i'd say it was quite popular with long live king hawk on the you know, so yeah, it, was it didn't actually make people convert it didn't actually but it obviously made a lot of happy drunks lying around <laughs> and i'm sure they they quite liked king hawk on but it didn't actually achieve any any great conversions which I, I think is uh, is interesting, you know. But he, he tried, you know, he tried, which was, uh, which was all right. Nice. I have one more tip, um, one more St. Patrick's Day tip. I don't yeah. know if this happens over there, but over here, our corned beef becomes very inexpensive. You can get it for two, three dollars a pound, especially directly after the holiday, whatever's left over. Um, if you take that corned beef and you soak it in ice water and change that ice water out frequently, you can basically turn that into a regular brisket, which costs about seven to ten dollars a pound right now. Oh, so that oh. is my St. Patrick's Day. You can stock up on what basically is essentially brisket. Mm -hmm. And you can get all that saltiness out by soaking it and changing out that water frequently. Oh, so there's a uh, there's a tip for you. That's interesting. Um, I must. I, I mean, I I wasn't particularly aware of that process. I don't do a great deal of cooking myself. I get well, I used to, but I don't now. But oh, that's an interesting tip. Yes, yes. It's in 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 the in the alleged words of Michael Caine, not a lot of people know that. <laughs> so, a few more people do know it thanks to you, you know. yeah there you go <laughs> well that's all i have do you have anything else to add um not uh, not not particularly no offhand i can't think of i mean this is sort of a little ad lib kind of a chat you know i mean normally i would go off and write it all down and all this kind of thing you know? but this is as um as shakespeare put it is extempore from my mother wit you know and my mother wit does tend occasionally to be a bit saggy these days, like me. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> I love our chats. I think they're great. Oh, no, no, no. oh, so do I, yes. I mean, I, I think they're brilliant. I, I love the stuff you're doing at the moment, your, your videos. Are and brilliant. there's no better person to talk about St. Patty's Day, uh, you know? Well, thank you very much. I, I, I appreciate that. I mean, obviously, I can't agree with you because modesty forbids me from uh, doing so, however correct you may be. But uh... <laughs> All right. Well, then we'll wrap it up. Please like and sub to Denton's channel. We're trying to get it back up to where it was before because YouTube stole it and won't give it back. So like, sub, comment, do all the things. It really helps us both out um, to grow our channels and to get seen by more people. So it's very important. So if you enjoyed it, that's the absolute bare minimum appreciation that you can do for us. And we would thank you greatly. Indeed, we would uh, appreciate that. I mean, uh, Lily's uh, videos are, are brilliant. And uh, yes, so lots of likes. Tell your friends, tell the world, spread the word, you know. Very, very good. Uh, and uh, no, you never know what happens. Happy St. Patty's Day and All Snakes Day, my friend. Absolutely, yes. Happy, happy St. Patrick's Day and Happy uh, Snakes Day as well. Okay. <laughs> bye bye. Goodbye for now. Goodbye for now.